So, how do you go from professional footballer to shopkeeper and vegan milkman? Why did I swap my boots for an apron? In societal terms, I've failed. But the reality is, in making this change, I've won. I've gained control of my life, and I continue to grow, learn, and achieve new things every day. Granted, this is a pretty significant change, but it all started with just one change and has rippled outwards into creating the life that I lead today. But, like all good stories, let's start at the beginning. I grew up in Manchester, Salford to be exact, in a place called Wharton. I come from a working class family and have three other siblings. We were normal, nothing too exciting about us, except it became apparent early on that football was weaving into my family's identity. My dad played semi-professional back in his day, and my two older brothers played it since I remember. <laughs> now, as you all know, being in Manchester, football is the heartbeat of the city. Blue or red, blue or red is the common question when meeting new people. By the age of seven, I was playing for Manchester United. I did have a brief stint at City, but swiftly returned back to the Reds anyway. Um, <laughs> you could say it was inevitable that I'd end up playing professionally. It didn't get handed to me, though. I had to work hard every single day, committing to training four times a week through my childhood, and staying even more focused as I battled my way through the teen years of drink and drugs, which thankfully never lured me in. In recent years, I've questioned my determination as a child. What was it that kept me motivated? Was it the genuine love of the game, or had it gotten into my subconscious at such a young age to chase the dream? You know the script, fame, medals, and money equals happiness, right? This seemed like the obvious path for me to take as school didn't agree with me, or I didn't agree with school. More on that later. So surely I belonged on the field where I could at least express myself and feel appreciated. On the field is where I ended up making my debut at Old Trafford in front of 75,000 people, playing with some of the most well-respected players of our time. With this came money and an expectation to live a certain way. By the age of 20, I had five cars in three years, always wanting a bigger, better model. I had the converted barn with electric gates, the apartment in the city center, the watches, the shoes, the biggest TVs available. But I also acquired something else that no one warned me of, loneliness. I drive back from training in my perfectly clean Audi, pull up to my perfectly clean house with its perfectly cut grass, and think, now what? My afternoons will be spent resting up watching DVDs or visiting casinos because the rest of the world will be working and I had time and money, but nothing to do with it. Environmentalism and football go together like, well, they don't really. There are no crossovers. When I was in the footballing world, I was a pawn in the consumerism game, buying and accumulating, not for need, but for greed. The guy that stands before you today, owning three pairs of practical barefoot shoes and shops in charity shops, once had his own walk-in wardrobe, but I can't even tell you how many pairs of trainers I had. <coughs> um, Aside from the fast fashion, there is an immeasurable amount of waste in the football world, something that I didn't notice when I was part of it. Water bottles, snack bars, ice packs, the list goes on. All disposable, all replaced very quickly. Now, don't get me wrong, there was a huge part of me that loved this world and the success of mine. It's what I'd worked so hard for, right? This meant things were going well. I feel I could have comfortably stayed stuck in this world, gliding from one season to the next, until a loan agreement took me overseas to Toronto FC, where it began to open my eyes a little wider and allow me to think a little clearer. I should have known things were going to be different when my new teammates turned up to work on their bikes, actual man-powered bicycles. Imagine it, using your body and enjoying your commute to work in the spring sunshine. So off I went and got a bog basic bike and I too started cycling to work. It was such a simple adjustment for me uh, and how it changed my mindset and my day. I then got to know my new teammates and at first, I was confused, intrigued, maybe even envious at the freedom that they'd had on their journey to become professional athletes. They were college educated, they had traveled, they played instruments, they had breathing space and were allowed to discover who they were. This is in comparison to the culture around football in England, where if you want to make it, you have to dedicate all your time and energy into one thing and one thing only, football. I, um, it was an incredible experience for me to be able to open my eyes and realize that these people were just everyday people, but they were also very good footballers and earning a very good wage. Um, and it was just eye-opening to me that you could be something more than just a footballer. But what? I settled into my new team, my new city, my new life, and I had space to breathe and to grow. It was the first time that I've lived away from my childhood friends and my family, and in doing so, I was really able to tune into what I like. It turns out that I was an eco-warrior all along that cared deeply for the oceans and animals. I owe a lot of thanks to the passionate filmmakers out there that are using documentary film to educate and inspire. 
During my time in Toronto, I'd watch documentaries like Blackfish, The Cove, Earthlings and I Am. It was like a light switch that turned in my, on in my mind. I wasn't the most important thing. We aren't the most important things. We could only exist alongside nature, and we as humans were ruining that. When you first get into environmentalism, you want, it, it becomes all-consuming. You want to shout it from the rooftops about what you know, what needs to change, and how everyone needs to get on board right now. It's basically not ideal when your head needs to be in the game. I'd say this was the first time that my attitude changed towards football, and without sounding too dramatic, I wanted to save the world. Training sessions began to drag, and I'd be wondering how I could get myself onto Sea Shepherd and start saving those whales. It wasn't an easy decision to make. It was masked heavily in fear, fear of finding a new identity, of becoming someone new, at retiring at age 26. In total, I spent three years in Toronto, followed by a year in New York playing for the Red Bulls, and then I returned back to England. Things didn't fall into place for me straight away, though. I went on a short-term deal to a League One side. Looking back now, I've wondered, was my heart not in it since I returned? Did this have an effect on the way I played? I'm a big believer in your thoughts creating your reality. Um, when I was younger, I'd spent hours imagining myself playing at Old Trafford. You've got to see it to believe it. So what was I seeing now? I was seeing, I was seeing myself having more control about where and when I spend my days. I was seeing myself inspiring change, but I wasn't seeing the future in football. Then, in the summer of 2016, my daughter was born. This sealed the deal for me. I had zero motivation to go on a preseason somewhere um, and leave my wife and daughter. Instead, I internet searched where the most vegan-friendly, eco-minded place to live in the UK was, and Totnes Devon came up. So, with our eight-week-old, we rented a VW camper and went to see Totnes for ourselves. After just three days we were sold, my wife and I sat on a beach and we said to each other, let's do whatever it takes to make this place our home. This is where my appreciation for my football training comes in. There is the finances I accumulated during my time as an athlete, which has allowed me to make a bold decision such as starting a new life somewhere else. I'm very aware that an advantage in this sense. After all, no matter how eco you want to be, the world is powered by money. But what I've come to learn is it makes a huge impact on how you choose to spend that money. What else did football give me other than money? It gave me transferable skills, persistence, resilience, adaptability, hard work and dedication, all of which I'd need in abundance for my next chapter. We found a rental in Totnes. Uh, well, I've sold my apartment and my house, first of all. Then we found a rental in Totnes. But we needed a job, a purpose, a livelihood. My savings would only last me so long. I'd spend hours going over ideas in my head of what we could do. Um, I have because, you know, I've never had a real job, effectively. So as I was scrolling through Facebook one day, uh, an eco page posted about a shop in Berlin where there is zero packaging. And all the, all the food is weighed out into your own containers. This blew my mind. Why have I never seen this? So as I left the bathroom, because I was doing the Facebook scroll in the toilet, as we all do, I said to my wife, I've got it. Babes, I've got it. Let's open a zero-waste shop. It just clicked. We were both buzzing with the idea of being able to fill our own containers with organic whole foods and run a little shop in the country. Fast forward a few months, and we've secured a lease in, of a shop in Totnes. And from October 2016 to March 2017, I self-taught myself everything I needed to know to set up and run my own business. This is where I want to return to my relationship with education. At school, I never felt part of anything. I was in the lowest set of all my subjects, and the style of teaching just lost me. I was the kid that teachers gave up on, the, that, the kid that was good at football but nothing else. Well, it turns out I have a very creative side, and I thrive when I'm in problem-solving situations. Um, I do accounts, wages, markups. I do maths, and I do it well. I'm telling you this because school is not a reflection of what you can do in life. Your lessons start when you enter the real world, and if you find something that interests you, there's nothing stopping you becoming a master at it. I now run two businesses that both started as a concept in my mind and have come together through a combination of hard work and passion. When I fell out of love with football, I fell in love with something else, the environment, the place that we all call home. I'm proud of my footballing achievements, but what I think I will be remembered for is I'm the guy who, along with his wife, opened the UK's first zero-waste shop. 
I'm the guy who partnered with a friend of his and has launched an organic glass bottle plant milk delivery company. I see problems with the world like plastic pollution and dairy farming, and I set out to change that. I've coined myself an ecological entrepreneur. I wouldn't be stood here today if I didn't make that decision to try something else, to start something new. We are often taught to fear change, but let's look into nature, our biggest teacher. The seasons change continuously, creating new growth. We've got to keep evolving, growing, and changing, otherwise we become stagnant. I now reside in an intentional community with my wife and two daughters. We grow our own food, or we share 10 acres of land, actually. We grow our own food. I walk or cycle to work. I socialize with people from all walks of life and are part of a thriving community. And I love waking up each morning knowing that I'm part of the solution, not the problem. So how do you go from being a professional athlete, professional football player, to shopkeeper and vegan milkman? You strive for a richer life, not in monetary terms, but rich in moments, love, purpose and connection. Thank you very much.